when I first came to Oregon, I, I looked at how uniform the yield management was being applied across the state and found that there's relatively low yield guidelines. And as a scientist, I really, was really intrigued by that. Each site is unique. Um, each site has different vine spacing, different root stocks, different clones of Pinot Noir, yet a lot of people are using a very narrow window of yield uh, targets. It's believed that low yields equate to high quality. Many of the, the premium wine regions throughout the world have identified this parameter. And our relatively young industry here in Oregon adapted that, that parameter for premium production. And over the years, we've, when we've looked at production ability within Pinot Noir specifically in Oregon, it really led us to wonder, could we do more? I'm Patty Skinkis, Viticulture Extension Specialist at Oregon State University. I'm a faculty member working on outreach and research within the Oregon Wine Research Institute. A lot of the research that I've done over the years kind of comes into two distinct categories. One is um, yield management and the other is sustainability. And really they go hand in hand. Cluster thinning is often employed within vineyards each season, particularly premium wine grapes such as Pinot Noir, to reduce crop level to a point that is considered to increase fruit quality. A lot of winemakers believe that it will concentrate flavors and produce a better quality wine in the end. Many of the producers of Oregon Pinot Noir will reduce crop level by 10 to 40%. This work is always done manually. This is very costly for producers. When I came in and I was really asking these questions, the industry group said, hey, we would love to partner with you to test this scientifically and do it in a, in a scientifically appropriate way that we haven't been able to do on our own. Back in um, 2012, we embarked on our first season of doing a yield management trial that involves growers as well as OSU to explore how crop thinning within vineyards down to two or three different crop levels and how that is impacting our fruit quality at harvest but also the wine quality based on sensory evaluation. Yield management begins in the vineyard as early as bud development and carries through fruit development. When we look at the bud, we can actually see it formed here already during this growing season, and it's producing the fruit or has developed the fruit for next growing season, and will determine how much fruit we produce next year. In that process, the vine is physiologically moving around nutrients and carbohydrates to develop both the bud and the fruit, but also developing what are known as floral initials or little tiny clusters within the bud. There's different practices that can affect this fruitfulness. Our yields are determined by what's developed in the bud. So not just looking at what crop is on this vine, but how are we altering that nutrient and carbohydrate stream that's feeding these tiny buds. Yield development can change year to year. Pinot Noir in general is known as a low yielding variety. So when we come into a, a season, we want to know how much fruit are we dealing with. Growers spend a lot of time trying to figure out how much fruit is there. But they oftentimes aren't looking at the bud. That what we do in a season prior or possibly even two years prior might be affecting the current season's crop. So we've done this research to look at both perspectives. What is this season's crop doing, but what are our, our potential impacts by doing different vineyard management practices on that bud, and how is that impacting our yield potential from year to year? This is our sixth season, and we hope to go for a total of 10 years. 
And the long-term nature of that work is really required to understand how yield management is really going to be necessary or unnecessary under certain uh, vineyard conditions as well as under certain climatic conditions in a given year. Within the first five years of the project, we had moderate to very warm seasons, and we have yields that ranged from normal to very high. How can we exploit that variability in the seasons to come up with guidelines for growers down the road so that they aren't hand-tied by a very rigid yield management guideline that's basically restricting them to a certain production level. That's the long-term goal of that study, um, is to really understand from that producer level how what they're doing in the vineyard is affecting the end product we might be able to reduce some of those labor costs uh, by not crop thinning as much uh, and also potentially having higher yields. Um, it's not saying that you don't have to crop thin at all, but if you have more of a certain quality of fruit, you might be able to have higher uh, volume of quality wine and therefore increase the total profit per acre. Those projects have really helped us to see the long-term effects of things that maybe vineyards take for granted and giving them some opportunity to adjust what they've always done. Exploring new and potentially um, better wines by looking at their yields a bit more carefully.